in keeping with this theme on innovation, I'd like to speak with you briefly about some of the innovative ide ideas we've been exploring in the area of medicine. And when one begins to approach and ask the question, how can I be innovative, I think the first question you need to ask is, where is the greatest need? What does society really need to have solved? And an area that we find is in great need of solutions is the area of drug delivery. Um, the problem with most drugs today is that good drugs go to the wrong places. Just take uh, cancer therapy, for example. Um, we administer a drug either intravenously or the patient takes it orally, and it distributes uh, systemically and indiscriminately into virtually every cell of the body. So you have drug uptake in the skin, in the heart, liver, lung, spleen, bone marrow, hair, and so forth, and the consequences are obvious. The patient's hair often falls out, the patient's nauseated, the bone marrow suppressed, leading to inhibition of the immune system, and the consequent uh, susceptibility to opportunistic infections, the patient's fatigued, there's often peripheral neuropathy, and the list goes on. The problem with this is not that the cancer drug can't kill the cancer cells. It indeed can kill the cancer cells. It's been designed to do that and been optimized for that purpose. The problem is it's going to the wrong places. So what do we want to do? We want to find a very simple solution to that. We want to find a smart molecule that can carry a good drug to the right place. This is illustrated in this first slide. What we do is we find a homing molecule that has no other purpose than simply to show the attached drug where to go. It's illustrated in this cartoon as the yellow uh, blob at the bottom of the molecule. This is a molecule that's going to be designed to home in very selectively on a disease cell. It can be a cancer cell. It'll be a different molecule for an infected cell, still a different one for a cell involved in heart disease, another one for a cell involved in inflammation. But we find these smart molecules. And then we attach it to that red, red blob at the top, and that red blob at the top is a drug that somebody else has discovered that has already proven to be effective in treatment of that disease. It's as simple as that. Let me show you how it works. And by the way, the blob at the top can be a therapeutic agent or it can be an imaging agent. The imaging agent can tell you where the disease is, how much of it is there, uh, whether your uh, disease is responding to your therapy, does it shrink or does it uh, increase in size and so forth. Um, <laughs> okay, I am not, uh, that wasn't part of my presentation. Here we go, whoops. Uh, you gotta go back one if you don't mind. Uh, this just shows, we've in this case used a homing molecule for cancer. Cancer has an enormous appetite for the vitamin folic acid. The vitamin's needed for cell division, so cancers want a lot of it. And we've taken advantage of, their, of the cancer cell's greed for this vitamin by linking it, in this case, to an imaging agent. And on the left, one can see an image of a patient with breast cancer that has metastasized to the brain. You can see exactly where the cancer is located. In the center, it's a patient with lung cancer, that, uh, with, excuse me, with brain cancer that originated in the brain. And you can see it exactly where the cancer, ag again, is located there. Again, you'll notice the homing molecule carries the attached drug selectively to the disease tissue. On the right, you'll see another cancer patient with ovarian cancer that's spread throughout the peritoneal <coughs> cavity. Again, it's not going to the brain, the heart, the lung, the liver, the spleen, the and so forth. It's going to the cancer. This is in the wrong order, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I'll uh, jump onto this. One application for this is the um, development of methods to uh, enhance the ability of a surgeon to remove malignant disease during surgery. A graduate student in my lab about 10 years ago linked this folic acid to a fluorescent light bulb, fluorescein, and injected it into a mouse with cancer. And as you can see here on the left, you can see the thoracic cavity of the mouse. You can see the heart in the center. That's that big, dark, dark uh, purple bulb. Below it is, uh, is the liver. But the, but the disease is in the lungs. And you can see precisely where, on the right, the uh, fluorescent light bulb is located. Now, if you were a surgeon, would you be able to find the cancer and resect it? Sure you would. The next... Um, a video here actually shows what um, the uh, translation of this initial technology into the clinic. Uh, 
two years ago, uh, we introduced the same molecule in collaboration with the surgeon, uh, Dr. Go Van Dam in Holland, into humans with ovarian cancer. And shortly before the surgery was initiated, uh, the lady with cancer was injected with this tumor-targeted fluorescent dye. Then the surgeon went ahead and removed all the malignant disease that he or she could see with the naked eye. After the, uh, um, Dr. Van Dam felt that he had removed all of the disease that was there, he then turned on the fluorescent light to see what was left. Now you can see up in the upper right-hand corner what the surgeon is looking at under current standard uh, care conditions. You can see it now in the center. It's very hard to distinguish cancer tissue from normal tissue. But when he turned on the fluorescent lamp, up in the right-hand corner, you can see very clearly and very precisely where the cancer is located. So Dr. Van Dam proceeded to cut off each fluorescent spot, set it off to the side, place it, then use a clean uh, forceps to place it in a tube and send it off to pathology to find out, is it cancer or is it not? And uh, as you can see, as he proceeds, proceeds through this surgery, he's able to remove all the fluorescent tissue. And importantly, the pathologist found that 100% of the fluorescent spots were indeed malignant. Moreover, Dr. Van Dam was able to remove five times more cancer with the aid of fluorescence than without it. Um. <laughs> Another anticipated benefit from using a homing molecule or a smart molecule to take an attached drug to a disease cell is that one would expect to see less toxicity to the healthy cells, right? Indeed, we checked this uh, using a drug that was found by a large pharmaceutical company to be lethal uh, in its non-targeted form in cancer patients. It could not be dosed. It was too poisonous. We linked it up to folic acid, injected it into the first 100 patients are shown here, the data, and asked what kinds of toxicities are there. And as you can see in the right column, there were no grade 4 toxicities, which are the toxicities that one most worries about. Even among the grade three toxicities, which are manageable, the worst was 6% of the patients had some fatigue. This is a remarkable uh, toxicity profile for a potent drug. But then the question arises, was it effective? Did we see any benefit? And indeed, uh, when patients with the receptor, this folate receptor, were selected using the imaging agent, uh, these patients were found that were treated with this drug showed a progression-free survival of 263% longer than the current drug that is used commonly today. So this shows not only that with this homing molecule to carry the attached cargo, do you get, uh, or do you get better toxicity or reduced toxicity, but also improved potency. Um, Another potential application of this is in, in determining the number of cancer cells that are in the bloodstream. To do this, one simply needs to inject a tumor-targeted fluorescent dye, put a microscope up to the blood vessel that can see through the skin, this is a multi-photon microscope, and count the number of fluorescent cells. These are red in this image right here. And ask the question, if I treat the patient, do these, does, does this number of fluorescent cells decrease? or not, and one can very quickly assess a response or a, uh, um, the, the response to a therapy. Um, I don't want to leave you with the impression that uh, uh, homing molecules can only be found for cancer cells. Uh, in a collaboration with a group at Mayo Clinic, we've, got, we've found homing molecules here for in, uh, cells involved in inflammation. These are images of patient of a patient's hands with rheumatoid arthritis, and you can see exactly which joints are arthritic. Uh, in this image of a mouse, we have developed a targeting molecule that homes in, in on atherosclerotic plaque for treatment of patients with heart disease. And you can see the healthy mouse on the left and compare it with the uh, mouse with heart disease on the right. In this one, we have placed five microliters of uh, an inoculum of H1N1 influenza virus on the nose of the mouse in the, in the middle, uh, waited three days until it contracted the flu, and then imaged it with a homing molecule that targets in flu-infected cells. You can compare it with the healthy mouse on the left. 
So you can, in fact, with some innovative thinking, develop these homing molecules that can be used for delivering drugs very selectively to almost any disease. Let me just conclude by pointing out that, again, I think that uh, today's medicines are administered so that they distribute indiscriminately everywhere throughout the body. I believe in 10 or 20 years, the medicines that we commonly take will be very highly targeted to the cells that have the disease, avoiding uptake by the healthy cells and the collateral toxicity associated with that uptake into healthy cells. This may, be, in fact, be a direction of medicine in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>